Hi, Jeff Sherman here, and welcome to the Ask Jeff Show, episode number one. We have uh, three questions here that I'm going to answer for you guys uh, from some of our audience members that had written in. If you have any questions of your own, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and we'll answer them on the next uh, on next week's Ask Jeff Show. So. The first question is from Brian. Uh, he uh, wrote in and he wants to know, since his ads are performing well and making money on the front end, should he double down and double the, his ad spend so he stops making money and increase signups to improve uh, long-term member numbers as opposed to improving immediate cash flow? So for me, um, I don't like to make any money on the front end. I feel like if I'm making money on the front end, then I'm leaving money on the table um, and not getting as many uh, potential new members as possible. So I'll, I would increase my uh, ad spend until I was uh, breaking even or even losing um, about 20% because I know I'll make that up in, uh, in new member sales. Um, when you go to, uh, to uh, scale your ads, you don't want to just go into the same ad and uh, increase the budget. So if your budget's like $20 a day, you don't want to go, go into that same ad and increase it to 40 Because what's going to happen is uh, if it's working at $20 and you say your audience is uh, so, you know, let me write this down for you. So uh, say you have an ad at twenty dollars a day, and it's converting, you know, on the front end, and you're making money. You don't want to go in and just increase that ad to forty, because what happens is that for twenty dollars a day, say you have an audience, just for numbers' sake, we say fifteen thousand, and you know, in your five mile radius that are, you know, that that are targeted, and for twenty dollars a day, Facebook is going to show your ad to you know, the 2,000 most qualified, and that's why it's converting. And if you open show, if you go in and increase this to $40 a day, what's going to happen is uh, Facebook is now going to show that same ad to the top. This is the top 2,000 of, you know, of, of the 15. Um, so if you increase it from 20 to 40, it's going to then show it to the top 4,000. So you're going to get 2,000 more people that are less qualified. Um, so you might see your conversions actually go down. So what you want to do instead is you want to go in and just keep, create a duplicate ad for, uh, for $20. You'll have two, two ads at $20 a day. And they're both going to be going to the same 2,000 people. So you're just going to reach the same 2,000 people that were already, it was already converting, but twice as much. Does that make sense? And um, some people have questions that, you know, won't we be competing against ourselves? And you will, but you're already competing with other people and um, it's not, you're not going to notice and it's still going to convert. And if, it's, if you're still making money on the front end, then you can go and you can, you can create another one at $20 a day and then another one. You know, just keep going until, you, until it stops converting. Um, until you get closer to that, that break even number. And what you can also do is you can also scale the audience. So um, if their age group was like 25 to 45, you can make it um, you know, 25 to 55. That'll give you like an extra 5,000 people. Or if it was like uh, three miles, you could go to five miles. Or if it was five miles, expand it to seven miles to increase your audience. So you can keep scaling until you, uh, in, until you hit that, you know, the, the break even point. Um, like I said, I, I even like to go to, uh, you know, if I'm losing 20%, then I know I've maximized the amount of leads that I can get. Um, and I know I'm going to make that money up, you know, on the sales for, for new members. So let me go ahead and erase that. We'll get into question number two. So the second question is from Chris. He says uh, his uh, New Year's Revolution um, funnel isn't converting as well as it did last year. And he wants to know, like, what he can do to increase conversions and get more people in this month. So um, I'm going to address the first question, or the first part of the question first. And uh, he wants to know why it isn't converting as well as it did last year. So um, I've been running these kind of funnels in my business for like the last five, six years. So uh, my market has seen every funnel um, more than once, probably five, six, seven times, and they don't really convert nowhere near as well as they did right off the page. Um, so your market gets smarter. It's called like market sophistication, and that's what's probably happening here. So you have to, uh, you know, be more sophisticated with with your marketing. Um, and the ways that, that you can do that is by uh, first testing it out with, um, you know, with your prospects on your email list. If it's not going to convert with your email list, it probably isn't going to convert with uh, with cold traffic. 
Uh, the second thing you want to do is start giving them good content leading up to the promotion. So you, we used to do that through a, through a blog, we put blog posts, videos, stuff like that. But now it's even easier with, uh, with Facebook videos, so you can either do live videos or you can create the videos and upload them and create the custom audiences off of the, the video views and then run your, uh, your um, low barrier offer ads to, uh, you know, to the video views um, audience. And, th and that's going to help um, with conversion because they've already consumed some content, they already kind of know, like, and trust you, they, they kind of have a good idea if it's something that they want to do. Um, just some general tips on what you can do to make sure that, um, that your funnel is going to increase the most is being a local business, the first thing people look for when they land on your site is, uh, is your address, the name of the company, and um, they're usually going to look up, they'll probably look up either your fan page, they'll probably click through to your fan page, um, and uh, kind of just check, at, check it out. And um, when they go to see your fan page and they see that you only have like 150 or 250 you know, fans that you posted, the last time you posted was like six months ago, they're probably going to think that either A, you're, you're not in business anymore, or uh, B, there's just not much going on and that is going to hurt the conversion of your ads as well. So it's really important to be posting you know, at least three times a day of good solid content on your fan page. The other thing they're going to do is go to your actual website, check that out, but they, they just want to know where you're located. If they have to search around on the, on the funnel to see where your address is or a phone number, um, then they're probably just going to leave. Um, some people have more questions, so they want to call in. So just make sure that you have your name, address, and phone number in the upper right hand corner. Make it really easy for them to, to, uh, to find you. Uh, the other thing is making sure that your call to action button is up in the, you know, I would say the top third of your sales page. If they have to scroll a long way, some people um, you know, won't scroll that far and they won't have the opportunity to, to click to sign up. Um, and uh, you also want to make sure that your social, uh, social proof, that you either have some good social proof, whether it's in the banner of the, of the uh, funnel or up higher in, in, your, uh, in your sales funnel as well. And, um, the other thing is making sure that you have a great follow-up system because you're going to have a lot of people that click through to the uh, to your um, shopping cart and then bounce. So make sure that you have those autoresponders in place to be able to follow up with the people that opted in but didn't buy, and then you'll be able to you'll be able to, you'll be able to you know convert a certain percentage of those you know in into in, you know into customers. Um, Another thing that you can do is leverage other people's lists. So you know, I talk about this all the time. Networking with other businesses. This is a good time of year to be able to, to, do, to you know to do that. Um, have them email out you know the, the, the emails promoting your, your New Year's revolution. Um, make it uh, you know um, some kind of uh, um, you know like a toys toys for tots drive or any kind of mission base where where you can uh, give back and make it easier for other businesses to to, to promote you. So um, cool. So I hope that stuff helped, and uh, in, you know, uh, start implementing those uh, those strategies and make those changes to your funnels, and you'll see the New Year's Revolution start to convert better. The other thing, this year, a lot of people, you know, they are jumping the gun and promoting their New Year's Revolution, you know, early. So a lot of people are just getting back into the swing of things. It's their first week back to work. Kids are back in school. Um, yeah, they have New Year's Revolution or resolutions that they want to accomplish, but they're still trying to grasp their their new schedule and, and getting back into the swing of things. So. I wouldn't even start promoting until right now and then launching it you know, later next week or even the week after. Um, usually like the 16th and, and later I've had the best results uh, with, with my New Year's promotions. So if you're um, struggling right now, I would say stick with it and maybe um, even push your start date back a week and give the people that already did buy a free week, let them come in and get started now and uh, push your start date back a week and keep promoting it for another week. That'll, that'll help as well. So our last, uh, our third and last question is, um, is from Joe. He wants to know like how can he hold his staff accountable. So I'm going to write some of these numbers down for you that he gave. Um, so he said he sold 51 low barrier offers. And out of those 51 low barrier offers, he um, his staff was able to get 10 consults. And out of those 10 consults, they sold, they only sold four to regular memberships. So there's a few problems here. And the first one is 50 is not bad for low barrier offer sales. But to only have 10 people come in for, uh, for consults is, is not good. There's, there's something missing in between the time they buy the low barrier offer and the time they come in for their first workout. 
So you don't want to micromanage your staff and they start taking over the sales and follow up and everything, but you want to um, you, you want to micro you don't want to micromanage, but you want to micro monitor. So you want to create systems in place that you can check and see. So if I knew we sold 51 low barrier offers, I could see a call log and from our monster follow up to see how many of them were actually called and thanked for buying our low barrier offer and asked like, when they wanted to get started with their program and have an actual date. And then from there, implementing my um, onboarding system to be able to con you know, continually follow up with them to get them to the consult, to get them to the regular paid membership and actually beyond. Um, so if you're not a Fitness Marketer Lab member right now, um, I suggest taking advantage of our seven day trial. Uh, my onboarding system's in there and that'll help fill in those gaps and help hold you accountable. And it's, uh, it's free for right now for, uh, for seven days. The other, the other problem here is that he got, he got 10 consults, but only sold, you know, only sold uh, four. So four to 10 is not, is not a good uh, ratio. Um, there could be some variables here, like if, like if they had two people selling and they each had five consults and one sold four out of five and one sold zero out of five, then obviously it's with one of the, you know, one of the salespeople and I would probably just give all the sales to the person who's closing and work with the other person until they got up to speed or give them, a, get, or give them another job to do. But um, normally it's uh, you know one person selling and four to ten isn't isn't acceptable um, for me for um, an employer my manager seven out of ten would be would be acceptable uh, for myself I'd want eight or nine um, you know out of, out of ten so uh, again um, if you're an FM Lab member then you've seen my non closed close if you haven't go check it out but basically uh, I created the non closed close as a way to make it easy for my staff to sell without really selling. And when they come in for the consult, all we're doing is um, offering them their first month at half off with no obligation to continue during the low barrier offer. And then using the monster follow up and my onboarding system to stay on track and stay on top of them and keep them on board. And usually, you know, with no obligation to continue, it's, there's no reason why that shouldn't be nine out of 10. And then maybe lose one or two of those and bring it down, bring it down to seven. So um, you want to create, you want to create systems and processes that you know, you're not gonna have to micro, uh, you know, micromanage your employees, but micro monitor. So through spreadsheets, um, you know, through uh, different protocols, um, and we have all those in Fitness Marketer Lab. I don't have time to go through each one of those in detail. But if you go to Fitness Marketer Lab and uh, take us, you know, take advantage of our seven-day trial, it's all, all of that's in there. So when you go in there, you want, you'd want to look for the monster follow-up. The non close close and um, we even have the group close in there. The group close is pretty much non close close but in a group format. So if you are getting a ton of low barrier offers and you can't do consults one on one, then you can then the next step is taking it to, to groups. So that's pretty much all I have for you guys for this week. So thanks for joining me for the Ask Jeff show for our very first episode. If you have any questions that you'd like me to answer uh, next week, leave them in the comment section below and I'll be more than happy to answer them. Talk to you soon.